this morning. Governor Macklin, we'll start with some opening remarks and then we'll get to your questions. Let me just quickly go over the ground rules. There are a, a lot of reporters here in Ottawa and we have some on the phone as well today. I will do my best to make sure every outlet has the opportunity to ask one question. Given the attendance, I'm gonna ask people to limit themselves to one question to start and we'll see about uh, getting a second round in if we, if we have the time. Nous avons beaucoup de journalistes avec nous aujourd'hui, donc je vais demander à tout le monde de vous limiter à d'une seule question. Et si nous avons le temps, on peut essayer une deuxième ronde. If I fail to do so, please state your name and affiliation, although I'm pretty good at that. Um, for those in the room, it'll be important for you to press the button in front of you to activate your microphones when asking your questions so that everyone can hear you. And uh, for those on the phone line, I'm going to ask you to please be careful with your audio. Uh, un unmute your line just to ask your question only, and then as soon as you're done, please go back on mute. And that way we can make sure that everyone will be able to hear both your question and the answer. Et avant de poser une question, veuillez-vous identifier et, comme toujours, libre à vous de poser and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Governor Macklem for his opening statement. Well, good morning. I'm very pleased to be here with the Senior Deputy Governor, Carolyn Rogers, to discuss today's policy announcement and our outlook in the Monetary Policy Report. Our policy decision today has two elements. First, we raised our policy interest rate by 25 basis points to 4.5% and we are continuing quantitative tightening. Second, if economic developments evolve broadly in line with the forecast we published today, we expect to hold the policy rate at its current level while we assess the impact of the cumulative 425 basis point increase in our policy rate. We've raised rates rapidly, and now it's time to pause and assess whether monetary policy is sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation back to the 2% target. La décision aujourd'hui comprend deux volets. Premièrement, on a relevé le taux directeur de 25 points de base pour le faire passer à 4,5 Et on va continuer le resserrement quantitatif. Deuxièmement, si l'évolution de l'économie suit la prévision publiée aujourd'hui, on va garder le taux directeur au niveau actuel pendant qu'on évalue l'impact de l'augmentation cumulée de 425 points de base de ce taux. On a haussé les taux rapidement. Il est temps de faire une pause pour voir si la politique monétaire est assez restrictive pour ramener l'inflation à la cible de 2 at our last two policy decisions, the Governing Council said we would be assessing how tighter monetary policy is working to slow demand, how supply chains are evolving, and how inflation and inflation, inflation expectations are responding. These assessments, together with our revised forecast, were important inputs into our policy decision. Recent data suggests that the restrictive stance of monetary policy is dampening household spending particularly on housing and big ticket items. But economic growth and employment in the second half of 2022 were stronger than we expected. And so excess demand in the economy has persisted, putting continued upward pressure on prices. Simply put, our overheated economy is not as cool, is not cooling, has not cooled as much as we expected. Global supply chains, on the other hand, are resolving more quickly than expected. And while we're not back to normal yet in Canada, we have seen substantial progress. CPI inflation declined to 6.3% in December, reflecting lower energy prices and some moderation in the prices for durable goods as supply improved and demand softened. Lower gasoline prices are welcome, but prices of essentials like groceries and rent continue to increase too quickly. Measures of core inflation have also been stuck at about 5%. With three months rates below year over year increases, core inflation will likely start to come down in the months ahead. Still, core inflation needs to continue to decline for total CBI inflation to get back to the 2% target. Regarding expected inflation, our surveys indicate that fewer households and businesses think inflation will stay high for a long time, but short-term inflation expectations remain elevated and are above our own inflation forecast. Based on these assessments, 
the Governing Council concluded that a further modest increase in the policy rate is appropriate. The bank's ongoing program of quantitative tightening is complementing this restrictive stance. Looking ahead, we know it takes time for higher interest rates to work through the economy to slow demand and reduce inflation. And given the speed and magnitude of the interest rate increases over the last year, their full effect is still to come. We can also see that the interest rate increases we've undertaken to date are already working. Higher interest rates are slowing household spending and inflation is coming down. With today's modest increase, we expect to pause rate hikes while we assess the impacts of the substantial monetary policy tightening already undertaken. To be clear, this is a conditional pause. It's conditional on economic developments involving, evolving broadly in line with our NPR outlook. If we need to do more to get inflation to the 2% target, we will. We're trying to balance the risks of under and over tightening. If we do too little, the decline inflation will stall before we get back to target. If we do too much, we will make the adjustment unnecessarily painful and undershoot our inflation target. Two weeks from now, on February 8th, we will publish for the first time a more detailed summary of Governing Council's deliberations. This summary will provide more insight into our decision making, so I can be briefer today. But let me say a few words about our economic outlook. L'inflation mondiale reste élevée et généralisée. Dans de nombreux pays, elle a descendu par rapport à son sommet. C'est surtout à cause des prix moins élevés de l'énergie et de la résolution d'une partie des problèmes d'approvisionnement. Aux États-Unis et dans la zone euro, la croissance économique a été plus forte que prévu, mais l'activité ralentit. Les marchés du travail restent tendus. Comme l'inflation est encore bien trop élevée, beaucoup des banques centrales ont continué d'augmenter leur taux directeur pour freiner la demande et faire baisser l'inflation. La banque estime que la croissance de l'économie mondiale a été proche de 3,5 en 2022 et descendra à environ 2 en 2023 et 2,5 en 2024. L'invasion de l'Ukraine par la Russie crée toujours de l'incertitude, surtout en Europe. En Chine, la levée brutale des restrictions sanitaires est une nouvelle source d'incertitude. C'est un risque à la hausse pour les prix mondiaux des produits de base. In Canada, the economy remains overheated and clearly in excess demand. Tight labor markets have shown only modest signs of easing. Job vacancies have come down a little, but remain elevated. The unemployment rate is near historic lows, and many businesses continue to report labor shortages. But as I said, higher interest rates are working to help the economy rebalance. Household spending has moderated. Demand for furniture and appliances is, has decreased, and housing market activity and prices have declined substantially. As pent-up demand diminishes, spending on services should ease. Higher interest rates are also expected to continue to slow business investment, and weaker foreign demand will weigh on exports. Putting this together, we expect growth in Canada to stall through the middle of this year before picking up later in the year. We project that on an annual average basis, Growth in Canada's GDP will slow from about 3.5% in 2022 to about 1% in 2023 and 2% in 2024. Lower energy prices, improve, improve global supply chains, and slowing demand should bring inflation down significantly this year. We expect CPI inflation to fall to around 3% in the middle of this year and reach the 2% target in 2024. Needless to say, there are risks around this projection. The biggest near-term risk is that global energy prices could increase, pushing inflation up globally. We're also concerned that if inflation expectations remain elevated in Canada or increases in labor costs persist, inflation will not come down as quickly as we forecast. Overall, we view the risks around our inflation forecast as balanced, 
But with inflation still well above our target, we continue to be more concerned about the upside risks. And if these upside risks materialize, we are prepared to raise interest rates further. Je vais conclure sur quelques messages clés. Les Canadiens sont soulagés de la baisse de l'inflation depuis l'été, surtout ceux qui ont dû mal à joindre les deux bouts à cause de leur hausse de la coût de vie. Mais une inflation à plus de 6 c'est encore trop élevé. Pour combattre l'inflation, la Banque du Canada a pris des mesures énerg énergétiques. Elle a fait passer le taux directeur de 0,25 il y a un an à 4,5 aujourd'hui. Et ça fonctionne. On prend un virage dans notre lutte contre l'inflation. On est encore loin de la cible, mais les évolutions récentes ont renforcé notre conviction que l'inflation descend. Et on est déterminé à la ramener à 2 pour que les Canadiens puissent compter sur une croissance durable et sur inflation bas, stable et prévisible. I want to leave you with a few key messages. The decline in inflation since the summer is welcome relief for the many Canadians who are struggling to keep up with the rising cost of living. But at more than 6%, inflation remains too high. To combat inflation, the Bank of Canada responded forcefully, raising its policy interest rate from a quarter of 1% to 4.5% today. It's working. We are turning the corner on inflation. We are still a long way from our target, but recent developments have reinforced our confidence that inflation is coming down. And we are committed to getting inflation all the way back to the 2% target so that Canadians can once again count on low, stable and predictable inflation and sustainable economic growth. And with that overview, the Senior Deputy Governor and I will be pleased to take your questions. Thank you very much, Governor Macklin. Before we start, I just uh, want to say that we are aware of some feedback uh, for reporters on the teleconference line. I just want to remind everybody on that line to make sure you're muted by pressing star six. Um, hopefully that clears things up. Uh, I'll also say if anybody has joined the call uh, in, in the last few minutes, a reporter who wants to ask a question, just send us a brief email to, at uh, communications with an S at bankofcanada.ca and we'll do our best to get you into the queue. So we'll go to questions now and we'll start here in the room in Ottawa and our first question is from Mark Rendell of the Globe and Mail. Go ahead please Mark. Thank you for taking the question Governor. Um, so the bank signaled that uh, a pause is most likely but you know you're still prepared to raise interest rates if needed. Uh, I'm wondering if you can expand on what if needed means. What would you need to see in order to hike rates again at this point in time? Uh, yes. Have you said Mark uh, we raised our policy rate today and we've signaled that um, it's time to pause and provide some time to assess whether we've raised interest rates enough to bring inflation back to target. So, uh, you know, wh what does that mean? Well, what it means is that if, if economic developments and in particular if inflation comes down in line with our forecast, um, you know, that will that'll, you know, confirm that uh, we've likely done enough. Uh, if, on the other hand, uh, we start to see an accumulation of evidence that inflation uh, is not coming down in line with our forecast, uh, we're prepared to interest rate, uh, raise interest rates further. I want to stress that, you know, this isn't going to key off one, one piece of data or, or one release. We're looking for an, an accumulation of evidence uh, and, and, you know, there, as you know, we, we follow a whole range of indicators, but I mean, clearly some of the key things we're going to be looking for is, um, you know, we're already seeing the effects of higher interest rates, slowing demand in interest sensitive se sectors. Uh, we do expect um, that to gradually feed through more to services prices, which are going to take longer to come down. That's something we're going to be watching. We're going to be looking to see that uh, inflation expectations come down uh, with inflation. And importantly, we're going to be looking to, to make to see that inflation is indeed coming down in line with our forecast. 
Thank you. We're going to go to Raul from Epoch Times next, please. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, actually, regarding the housing market, the, the NPR said that the bank expects house prices to decline further, you know, especially in markets that were red hot. Does the, does the bank have an expectation of what the magnitude of house price declines will, will ultimately be, whether it's 20% or 30%? And, and just given the decline in longer term uh, bond yields, especially the five year, and the, uh, that home sales are starting to edge up again, do you, do you see that the, the downturn in housing overall may be uh, much milder than than maybe others might be uh, predicting. And, and, you know, there's some positive forces, as you mentioned, immigration and unemployment is, is extremely low uh, right now. But but of course, there's still the debt levels. I can turn to the senior deputy governor for for that question. Yeah, thanks for the question. Well, I mean, the, the housing market's really evolving broadly along the lines that we expected it to. It's not going to change. Sorry, I'll start again with my mic on this time. Um, the, the housing markets uh, evolved broadly in line with our expectations. As you've mentioned, um, uh, it's come down, uh, activities come down significantly and prices have come down as well. Um, it's important to remember they've come down off extreme highs. Uh, we saw a real run up in prices and activity uh, during the pandemic, um, that was an unsustainable level of act, unsustainable level of activity. Um, it has come down since then. We do expect, as we outline in the NPR, that that uh, pullback will continue in the first couple of quarters um, uh, of this year. Uh, but as you also pointed out, there are some fundamentals that we think uh, will lead to a pickup again later in the year. Um, immigration is picking up again. Um, so we do expect housing to come back. And, and you are right, a housing, uh, housing costs, mortgages are priced off the bond market in Canada. So as those prices stabilize and come down a bit, uh, we should see that show up uh, in the market. That, that may have some, some help in, in a rebound, but, but we do think there is a, a little bit further to go for the housing market to come down a bit. We'll go next to Steve Shearer from uh, Thompson Reuters, please. Good morning, Governor. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, during, in your forecast uh, for inflation today, you say um, you forecast that it'll be declining to 3% by mid-year and then 2% next year. Since 3% is sort of the upper band of your target, does that mean when once you get to 3% you can start considering uh, cutting or, or, and you know, money markets are pricing in a cut by October? Um, well, look, you know, today we've announced that we're raising and we think it's time for a pause. Uh, but let, let's keep in mind that inflation is still over 6%. Uh, and um, yes, uh, you know, we, we are certainly seeing clear evidence and that has reinforced our, our confidence that inflation is coming down. But uh, look, we do, we do have to be humble. There are, there are, there are uh, a number of risks out there. Uh, which we've outlined in the monetary policy report. Um, so it, it's really far too early to be talking about cuts. Uh, you know, the, the, the pause really is designed to give us time to assess whether we've raised interest rates enough to get inflation all the way back to target. And, and I would also just emphasize that uh, the one to three percent band is, is not a zone of indifference. It's designed to give a sense of Know, where Canadians can normally expect fluctuations in inflation. And if you want to be within the 1% to 3% band most of the time, you need to aim for the middle of the band. So our objective is to bring inflation all the way back to 2%. Thank you. We'll turn now to uh, Market News and Greg Quinn. Good morning. Uh, I want to ask about the, the confidence in the, the view of an inflation is solidly significantly coming down. Uh, l last year, officials expressed some doubts about your ability to forecast inflation. You abandoned a measure of core inflation that proved to be a little bit wonky. Um, in particular, the view that inflation is uh, of 2%, the target is, is within sight now. That also seems a contrast with your own survey of consumer expectations, uh, which show a much higher view of prices over that time frame. So where is this confidence coming from that inflation is getting back under control? Uh, Greg, Greg um, look, I don't want to minimize the risks, and I'll come back to that. But, but let me start with 
there, there are a number of things that are giving us uh, some confidence or, or reinforcing our confidence that inflation will come down. First is we are seeing evidence that the considerable and rapid interest rate increases that we have uh, put in place are working. Uh, you can see uh, clear evidence of slowing in more interest sensitive parts of the economy and you can see the rates of inflation on those goods goods uh, have, have come down. Secondly, we, we have had some more favorable developments with global supply chains. Uh, those disruptions uh, are resolving and in fact relative to October they've they've resolved a little faster than, than we were expecting. Um, inflation uh, has, has come down. And if you look at the, you know, the, the, the you know, three month for, you know, you look at shorter term measures of inflation, three month uh, moving average, for example, you can see that the momentum in inflation uh, is cooling. And finally, uh, Look, we, we raised our policy rate uh, 25 basis points uh, today. So we've now got a cumulative increase of 425 basis points. Monetary policy is in restrictive territory. And you know, we know monetary policy works with a lag. And you know, as the effects of those higher interest rates work through the economy, uh, we do expect to see um, a more generalized slowing in prices. So, these developments have reinforced our confidence, uh, but um, yes, as I said to a previous question, look, we do need to be hum humble. Uh, you know, we are living in a very uncertain war world. Uh, there's a continued war in Europe. Uh, China is reopening rapidly. Um, that could certainly create some upside risks to global um, Commodity prices, oil prices could could go back up. That would boost global inflation. So, you know, as I said uh, in my opening statement, we think it's time to pause, but that is a conditional pause, and uh, we are going to be uh, watching carefully to see if uh, economic developments come out in line with the forecast we put out today. We'll go now to uh, Kevin Carmichael from the Financial Post. Um, good morning. I, I have a housekeeping question related to the balance sheet, uh, at the risk of slowing the momentum of this press conference, but uh, I thought I'd get it out there for the record. Uh, you said uh, last fall, Governor, that uh, you and the government were getting close to some sort of a resolution around the fact that the central bank is on what could be a considerably lengthy uh, period of um, of money losing. Uh, have you come to some sort of a uh, resolution around on this issue? Um, well, let me just, just begin, uh, Kevin, by underlining that um, you know, we're here to discuss monetary policy and uh, the bank's losses have no impact on our our monetary policy decisions. Um, but, but since you've asked and since our, our losses are certainly uh, generating some understandable questions, I, let, me, let me say a few, thing, a few things. The first thing I want to underline is that our losses are temporary. Normally the Bank of Canada uh, makes uh, net positive net earnings and that's because we earn interest on our uh, assets uh, and we don't pay, our main liability is currency, our banknotes in circulation, and we don't pay interest on that. Um, through the first parts of the pandemic, through 2020, 2020, 2021, uh, with QE, we expanded our balance sheet considerably. Uh, we had more assets that created more uh, net income, and we remitted that to the government. More recently, with the increases in interest rates, as you as you mentioned, um, the interest we're paying on the settlement balances, uh, the, that interest rate is now higher than the interest we're getting on our assets, and so our net interest uh, income has turned negative, and uh, you know, we report our financial statements regularly, and as you saw in our Q3 financial statements, uh, that has resulted in our net income turning negative for the first time. Um, we will have a period of a couple years of an likely a likely a period of a couple years of negative net income before um, our income reverts back uh, to its normal positive state. And as you indicated, um, or I think as you're aware, in our current legislation, the Bank of Canada does not have the ability to um, offset losses with uh, retained earnings. We, re we remit all our retained earnings to the government. 
Um, second point is, I'd underline, is that the Bank of Canada is not alone in this problem. Um, other central banks that are engaged in QE are also uh, experiencing or will be experiencing losses, and there are various solutions. And as you mentioned, um, the Bank of Canada and the Department of Finance have been discussing um, what would be the best solution uh, in the Canadian context. Uh, and I can tell you that the Minister of Finance has recently communicated to me that the government intends to introduce legislative amendments that will allow the bank to retain earnings to offset losses. So what this means is it will allow on a temporary basis the Bank of Canada to retain earnings rather than remit them to the government uh, for, the purposes, for the purpose of covering losses. Once positive equity is restored, we would resume our normal remittances to the government of Canada. Uh, this will, uh, this will, uh, uh, I mean, what I would say is this is a good solution. It'll allow us to, to manage our equity uh, and it'll give, us, it'll give us all the tools we need. Um, the final part, though, is I do want to go back to where I started. I want to reiterate that uh, none of this ha has any impact on monetary policy. We don't run monetary policy with a profit motive in mind. Uh, monetary policy, uh, all our policy decisions are guided by our price stability and our financial stability mandates. We'll turn now to Najou Damalis from uh, Canadian Press. Hi, Governor. <clears throat> I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about where the bank expects the labor market to, to head in the coming months. Um, the, the monetary policy report mentions that, you know, it, it, it will start reacting to interest rates over a period of time. And I'm wondering if you could also just weigh in a little bit about um, your thoughts on maybe whether there was too much fear around the idea of a wage price spiral given wages have already stabilized and a lot of those wage increases had to do with labor shortages rather than inflation? Um, so, uh, look, labor markets are a big part of the Canadian economy. Um, and to go back to where I started, the economy, you know, growth through the second half of last year was stronger than we expected. It is slowing, but it didn't slow as much as we thought. And you know, one, of the, one of the things we're seeing is that the labor market remains very tight. Uh, if you look at, it, 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 has, it has cooled uh, a little, but you know, vacancies, yes, they've come down, but they remain very elevated. At, f at 5%, the unemployment rate is near historic lows. Uh, and certainly companies continue to tell us that they're, they're having trouble attracting all the workers they need. That's a symptom of an overheated economy. And you asked, you know, so what are we expecting going forward? We've raised rates forcefully. We've raised rates rapidly. As those work through the economy, part of rebalancing demand and supply in the economy is rebalancing the labor market. So we do expect to see uh, some cooling of the labor market. We expect it to come uh, into better balance. Um, with respect to the... Um, issue of a wage price spiral. Um, with inflation uh, rising rapidly, uh, we have been concerned that inflation expectations could come unmoored uh, and, and this could uh, precipitate a wage price spiral. Uh, one of the things that is giving us or reinforcing our confidence that inflation is coming down is that, yes, uh, I think the, the risks of a wage price spiral have diminished. Uh, wage growth uh, is running about four to five percent. Um, it looks to have plateaued in that in that range. Uh, in addition, if you look at our um, our surveys when we go out and, and ask businesses and households their inflation expectations, uh, they inflation expectations remain elevated, but fewer people think inflation is going to remain high for a long time. So those expectations at the sort of the tail have, have pulled in. So both those things suggest that the risk of a wage price spiral has gone down. But what I will say is that uh, wages running in the four to five percent range, if that were to persist, if that was to be sustained, um, you know, that and unless there's a, a surprisingly strong acceleration in productivity, that's not consistent with getting inflation back to our 2% target. So that is something we will be watching closely. Okay, next on my list is Kevin Gallagher from CTV, please. 
Morning, Governor. Um, I just want to see what your projections are for a recession. Um, obviously, this might be a bit of a recession by design, since rates were designed to, you know, in many ways, cool off the overheated economy. But it does seem like it's a bit of a rosy outlook in terms of the impact. We heard yesterday from economists advising cabinet, you know, that there could be, uh, they wouldn't rule out, uh, quote, hard landing. Um, the projections within your uh, outlook here for 2023 seemed to be more of a stalled, um, almost a soft landing. So what, what do you think those projections are, given that there will be a slowing of the economy with these measures? We, the economy is slowing, and we expect it will continue to slow. Uh, we expect that growth through the next two, three quarters is going to be pretty close to zero. Uh, that's, you know, that is an economy that is stalled. Um, it's not going to feel good. Um, that's, you know, that's basically no growth. Um, we do need this period, though, of, uh, of, of essentially no growth to allow supply to catch up. We do need to rebalance. Demand is running ahead of supply. We need to give supply a chance to c catch up. That's, that's a big part of uh, reducing the inflationary pressures, and that's a big part of restoring price stability. But I, I don't want to pretend that uh, it's painless. It's not painless. Uh, we've raised interest rates forcefully. Uh, that is impacting many Canadians. Um, we are seeing it's working. We're seeing it's working in those interest sensitive sectors. Um, and we think it will continue to spread through the economy. Um, and once we get, once uh, supply catches up with demand, uh, inflation will come down and growth can be restored. Um, with respect to, you know, is that a recession? Is it not a recession? Um, I guess the way, the way I would put it is with, with uh, a projection of, of roughly zero growth for two to three quarters, what that means is it's just as likely that we'll have uh, two or three quarters of slightly negative growth as slightly positive growth. So yes, it could be a mild recession. Uh, it's not. A major contraction. Bon, passons maintenant à Olivier Ferrand-Boisset du Réseau TVA. Bonjour, merci de prendre nos questions, Monsieur le Gouverneur. Euh, vous disiez plutôt quand vous posez une question à savoir s'il allait avoir des coupes ou des réductions de votre taux directeur que pour l'instant on était à, à voir si les hausses cumulatives étaient suffisantes pour euh, faire descendre l'inflation à, à 2 Cette cible-là, elle est prévue pour 2024. Donc, est-ce que pour que les gens comprennent bien à la maison, euh, même dans le meilleur des scénarios, il ne faut pas s'attendre à ce que le taux directeur diminue avant 2024, c'est bien ça? Euh on n'a pas dit ça. Euh, on a dit que maintenant, nous pensons que c'est le temps de prendre une pause pour voir si euh, on a assez haussé nos taux directeurs pour amener l'inflation à, à 2 C'est euh, beaucoup trop tôt de parler des, euh, des réductions des taux d'intérêt. Euh, il y a des risques à la hausse et, et si... Euh, l'inflation ne diminue pas en ligne avec notre prévision. On est prêt d'augmenter nos taux, di taux directeurs euh, encore. Euh, mais euh, je veux souligner que euh, c'est important. De, euh, on, on sait que euh, la politique monétaire euh, marche avec des retards euh, et donc euh, on, on doit toujours regarder euh, le futur. Okay, we're just about done here in the room, uh, so I'll thank the people on the line for their patience. Uh, I just have uh, Randy Thantong Knight from Bloomberg. Hi, Governor. Um, is there a risk that by explicitly signaling a pause that could reignite some inflationary pressure? And are you still more worried about um, the risk of under tightening? Um, well, with, with, I think we did a pretty thorough job of outlining the risks in the report. Um, I think the, you know, why are we signaling that we think it's time to pause? I think it's, it's pretty straightforward in, in, in our own deliberations in the governing council. Uh, you know, that, that was our assessment. And so we're communicating that clearly with Canadians. As, 
I, I will underline once again, it's a conditional pause. It's conditional on economic developments coming in uh, broadly in line with our the forecast that we put out today. And look, if, if upside risk materialize, if uh, we start to see an accumulation of evidence that inflation's not coming down in line with our, our forecast, uh, we're prepared to inter raise interest rates further uh, to bring inflation back to target. Okay, we're going to go to the phone lines now. I Currently, I've got four people on the list, and we're going to start with Craig Lord from Global News. Go ahead, please, Craig. Craig, if you're there, it's star six to unmute. Okay, we'll circle back um, at this point. Um, I've got uh, Kamutha from uh, BNN. Go ahead, please. Hmm. Okay. I'm wondering if there's an issue on the line. Um, Alicia from Yahoo Finance. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Hey, Craig from Hey, Google. okay. We'll we'll start we'll start again then. Excellent. I'm glad it still works. Craig, go ahead, please. No worries. Uh thanks for, for taking our questions. Um Governor Macklem, you said earlier that uh you expect the labor market to come back into better balance. Um a lot of economists have, have kind of theorized that if a, there's a mild recession, some businesses would actually be reluctant to, to shed jobs given, you know, today's labor shortages. It, it would, would businesses holding on to labor through a recession uh, affect your ability, the Bank of Canada's ability to slow demand? And would that potentially force additional interest rate hikes? Um, well, look, the, the, the labor market is certainly an important uh, element of the information we're going to be looking at. Uh, and, you know, as we've highlighted and as we published on our website, uh, we're following a wide range of labor market indicators. You can't really summarize the health of the labor market in, in one or two indicators. Um, I think, look, if, if, if uh, the labor market doesn't rebalance, uh, if, if it remains really tight, uh, the host and, and the meeting. This meeting will end in five. And and that you know continues to put upward pressure on prices. Uh, you know, the, yes, that is something we'd have to we'd have to take into account. You'd probably see that more in in service prices. Uh, and in one of the boxes in the NPR, we do we do outline that um, you know the we're starting to see goods prices. Uh, or in inflation and good prices come down. Uh, that's partly the the uh, resolution of global supply chains. It's also partly the, the monetary policy working to soften demand. Uh, it's going to take longer to bring those services prices down. And that rebalancing in the labor market is an important element of getting uh, service price inflation to come down. Okay, I'm... Uh... <laughs> I'm being uh, told now that we've had uh, problems with the uh, with the phone line and it has been lost. We're hoping um, um, at this point. I'm going to take a quick tour of the room here to see if anyone's got a, a quick follow up while we see if the if uh, questions are going to come in by uh, um, by email. I know there were at least a couple outlets here who did not get a, a question on the first round. Okay, I think we're, I, apparently we're back. Um, Kat Eschner from TVO, are you there? I'm just checking my watch to make sure this is not Friday the 13th. Okay, I'm going to go to Najud who had a follow-up um, while we try to sort this out in the remaining couple of minutes, Najud. Yeah. Um, as the bank now shifts to a different stage uh, where it's it's pausing its rate hikes, um, what communication challenges do you see ahead for the Bank of Canada when it comes to communicating with the Can with Canadians about um, its role in the economy? Um, well, 
I think the, uh, you know, a, a few key things here. First of all, uh, you know, eight, you know, six percent inflation is better than eight percent inflation, but six percent inflation is still way too high, and you know, Canadians are still feeling the pain of rapid increases in the cost of living. Uh, you know, economic developments have reinforced our confidence that inflation is coming down, uh, but you know, it's going to take us a while to get there, uh, and. Uh, the economy is going to be soft. I mean, we think growth is going to stall. So there, you know, this is going to be a tough adjustment. Um, I think the, you know, the key message is uh, it's working. Uh, we do think that the momentum in inflation uh, has shifted. Inflation is coming down. Uh, and as we get through that, as we get inflation back down to our target, uh, Canadians, can enjoy the benefits of, of being confident that inflation will be low, stable, and predictable, and uh, we can resume to positive growth. Uh, but I don't want to diminish the I don't want to diminish the you know the adjustment that, that we have to go through to get there. It's going to be worth it. It's working, but it, there is an adjustment. Okay, I can tell you we have received uh, one of the questions online by email. I'll just pose it uh, on behalf of Kat Eschner from TVO. She's asking if, uh, Governor, could you please tell more about the range of labor market indicators that the bank is watching to establish uh, the, what it considers the maximum sustainable level of employment? Uh, actually, I'll ask the Senior Deputy Governor to say a few words about that. Uh, turn my mic on this time. Um, thanks for the question, Kat. Uh, we watch um, a really broad range of indicators, but really at this point, by any measure you look at it, the labor market continues to be tight. I mean, we've um, th there's a couple of, of um, good uh, elaborations of this in the NPR report. Um, chart 10 is one that we've included uh, for uh, a while now, and you can see um, a number of data points that tell us that the labor market continues to hover around record highs. Um, the, the historical low unemployment rate is 4.9%. Is We're sitting at 5. Um, unemployment is below pre-pandemic levels in every province in Canada. Uh, so those certainly are key indicators. But, there, but as the governor said earlier, there really isn't a single indicator that tells us, um, uh, you know, without reservation that the, that the labor market um, has recovered. So we're going to be continuing to look at this broad range of indicators. Um, and we're going to add that to other data we see. Um, you know, as we've said, uh, the pause that we're, that we're communicating today is very conditional on the economy evolving the way we've laid out in our NPR. Um, it took us an accumulation of data to get to the decision that we made today and to get to the decision to pause. It will take an accumulation of data um, in the other direction. Uh, you know, we need to see momentum turn um, to come off that pause. But, but if it does, uh, uh, we will absolutely act the way we have acted continually over the last year to get inflation back to our 2% target. Okay, I'm going to make uh, one more attempt here. Um, uh, Kamutha from BNN, if you're on and you can hear, please uh, press star six to unmute and see if you can ask your question. Fingers crossed. Hi there, this is Kamitha Ramanathan. Governor Macklem and Senior Deputy Governor Rogers, conversations on Bay Street have already started about interest rate cuts. What are the parameters for such a cut? And do you think these Bay Street observers are getting it wrong by discussing such a shift at this stage? Uh, I think it's far too early to be talking about cuts. Um, look, inflation is still above 6%. Yes, uh, Recent developments have reinforced our confidence that inflation is coming down, uh, but we have a long way to go uh, to get back to our 2% target, uh, and we are resolute in our commitment to get all the way back to 2%. Uh, the, as I've indicated, um, you know, in, we're talking about a pause, and the pause is really a period to allow us to assess whether we've raised interest rates enough to get inflation back to target. Uh, we're trying to balance the risks of over and under tightening. We, we don't want to underdo it and then inflation uh, stalls uh, on the way down. So um, yeah, to start where, 
to end off where I started, uh, it's way too early to be talking about cuts. Okay, I've got one more on the line, and I've got one by email. I'm going to ask uh, Alicia from Yahoo Finance if you can unmute pr by pressing star six. Okay, thank you for giving me another shot here. Um, Governor Macklin, what's your message to Canadians who are still feeling the impact of high inflation with higher debt costs and, and grocery prices re remaining uh, stubbornly high? How do you want them to think about this conditional pause? Uh well, I think the message to Canadians, first of all, is that um, we know inflation is still too high. Uh, and we know that's affecting Canadians. Uh, we're acutely aware that low-income Canadians are uh, disproportionately affected by this high inflation. They don't have uh, extra savings to buffer the price increases. And uh, we're still, some of the largest price increases have been in essentials, in groceries. Food prices are still going up uh, 11%. Uh, rent is rising. Uh, rent, rent is increasing. These are essentials. These are not things that you can cut back on. Uh, so, we're acutely aware that Canadians are feeling feeling that. Um, I think our second message is uh, the Bank of Canada has done a lot. We've raised rates now 425 basis points on a cumulative basis uh, over the last year. Um, that is uh, that is putting an increased burden on Canadians that have high debt loads. Uh, that is stretching them. Uh, but what we see is that you know, as these interest rates, interest rate increases are working through the economy, they are working to rebalance demand. Inflation is coming down. And yes, we're going to have a period of, of you know, virtually no growth uh, for the next few quarters. Uh, but as inflation comes down, uh, the growth will be restored and it's going to be worth it. Okay, I had two people actually who were affected by the uh, problems that we had on the line, so I'm going to ask these uh, two really quickly. First, uh, Reed from CBC wants to know, how long can Canadians expect to live with high interest rates? Uh, look, as I said earlier, um, you know, that's really going to depend on, on the evolution of the economy, the evolution of inflation. Uh, it's too early to talk about cutting interest rates. We've announced a pause today. Uh, and that pause is, is, is conditional. It's conditional on economic developments coming out in line with our forecast. Uh, if, if, if we need to do more, if we need to raise interest rates further to get inflation back to the target, we will. Um, it's too early to be talking about cuts. And the last question I have, um, Tony Mace uh, from Mace News asking, um, what our senses of how restrictive financial conditions are currently, and how is that affecting our thinking about policy? Um, well, you know, we, we've raised rates cumulatively 425 basis points. We've also uh, undertaken, we've also reinforced those interest rate increases with quantitative tightening. Uh, together, um, monetary policy is restrictive, and, and you know, the best way to see that is is you can see the effects of monetary policy, interest rate sectors, uh, housing, uh, spending on interest sensitive items like like appliances, consumer durables, uh, they are weakening and and we're seeing uh, price uh, price inflation in those areas come down. So you can see the effects of restricted monetary policy working through the economy uh, and what we're going to be watching closely is how the effects of restrictive monetary policy spread through the economy. Um, it's going to take longer to get to services. They're less interest sensitive. But uh, with pent-up demand for services coming off, with uh, interest rates spreading through the economy, we do expect to see service price inflation come down as well. Okay, and that will conclude today's press conference. I want to thank the governor and senior deputy governor, and I want to thank everybody for their patience as we worked through those technical issues, uh, particularly everybody on the line. Uh, I know we ran a little long, but uh, wanted to get to everybody. Thank you all for your attendance today, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yes, thank you, and, and our apologies for the technical problems. <laughs>